okay good morning good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, thank you for joining in, in today's webinar or organized by sadla technologies on the economical plc and scada based engineering solution for batching we have with us our two panelists for the day mr navneet kanalkar who is the vice president of sadla technologies and mr madhukar agre who heads the process automation business now both navneet and madhukar has more than 20 years of experience in this field and they'll be sharing their experience during the course of the next 45 minutes should you have any questions for the speakers you can drop them in the chat box or the questions tab that you can see in your pan over to you madhukar i hope you thank you rajul all can hear us should should you have any questions or if you are facing some technical difficulties you can use the chat box uh, in the pane of go to webinar and we'll we'll try to address your questions madhukar over to you thank you prajwal um okay uh, so we'll start uh, today's uh, webinar uh, and navneet uh, we will going to start uh, the first sections uh, following the uh, second section of the uh, of the agenda okay so navneet uh, yes can you move on to the first slide yes sir yes so uh, i will just uh, cover uh, the below agenda uh, just give a brief small brief maybe a five minutes brief about what uh, we are at sarla technologies what we do and uh, what's our understanding of acet standard for batch process and then we will move on to how we can make an uh, uh, you know acet batch compliant uh, compliant batch process using uh, plc scada Uh, we will cover what are the core modules features and design considerations we need to take into account uh, while we design the batch process using uh, plc scada uh, we have prepared a small demo uh, of a mixing process which is quite normally used uh, you know uh, in the industry uh, mostly in the batch processes and how we have configured it using the plc scada so this will be a live demo where we will use uh, rockwell automation technology uh, so ftv scada and the control logics plc and we will run through the demo uh, that will be pretty much it uh, for the 45 minutes and it will be followed by a q and a so uh, we'll move on to the next slide just a quick brief of our the company sarla technologies madhukar can i go to the next slide yeah so about sarla technologies so we have around uh, collected 90 plus years of experience in engineering services and solution in industrial automation design engineering and plant it we primarily work with uh, global oems uh, in the market who especially bring the technology along with their machinery skid machinery or you know oem machinery into the market mostly we work with process oems where most of this uh, batch technology is used and we have gained a very uh, high level of experience uh, we have enriched our portfolio working with this global oems and it's in multiple industries of course we also work in lot of discrete environment um, especially robotics and material handling where also you know mostly we have used technologies like packml for packing uh, which again is based on the acet standard we also work with a lot of automation and it oems apart from that we work with epc system integrator and solution providers around the world so uh, working with uh, various customers in various continents and in various industries and various technologies we uh, have gained uh, you know based of all this uh, you know projects which we have done and we could uh, understand the nitty gritties of uh, you know implementing batch solutions and that's where our experience came Using standard batch softwares, and, you know, uh, PLC is a route of implementing the batch process, which this session is all about. We have uh, experience in multiple industry verticals, right, from food bev uh, to you know consumer goods, pharmaceutical, infrastructure utilities, and many other industries around the you know in the domain. Uh, we have excellent track record of implementing this in Europe, Americas, Africa, Middle East, Asia Pac, and 
many other clients we have worked with mostly all fortune 500 companies and that's where our experience has you know uh, enriched us in bringing the best of the technology and standards in our projects uh, in terms of uh, you know because we work in different parts of the globe we have worked in multiple uh, you know uh, automation oem equipment like you know mostly from siemens rockwell wonderware g immersion honeywell uh, so again cross platform expertise is there uh, you know when we design sat solution we can take into account the best of all this technology and design the uh, our projects especially for the sat uh, driven industry or where the sat compliance is needed uh, of course we have in house quality management system and we are iso 9000 2015 certified of, uh, because sat is usually uh, you know document uh, documentation is quite important in terms of you know uh, documenting our board structures documenting our approach uh, our quality documents definitely help us to give those standardization and templates that are needed to the uh, SAT industry. Now, we are on 450 plus multi-skilled engineers uh, uh, with a global experience in all these industries and you know all these continents around the world and using various technologies. And definitely, they add and enrich our experience in designing such uh, you know uh, very important SAT and best uh, projects and we have been executing it around the world and not only design and developing it but finally commissioning it so this is a brief about sarla technologies maduka can you just move to the next slide uh, very diverse landscape uh, but we um, work in all the layers which are normally referred to as an automation pyramid or automation triangle right from the design layer where we understand the integrities of electrical instrumentation and to an extent of mechanical and piping design and we use uh, you know uh, you know we do uh, use a lot of uh, 2d and 3d to work you know in our day-to-day -day projects uh, and we design them using the hygiene standards and from there if we take to the industrial automation we are platform agnostic we use multiple plc dcs kedas batch safety drives controls and robotics to integrate our projects and then connect to the plant it layer or you know the business layer where we implement mass mom and smart connectivity and with today's uh, session which is about SAT and standard, uh, you know, definitely we know the how the interface work for the S95, which is the MES layer. And uh, in many MES project, uh, the batch falls in the domain of MES. And uh, along with the batch, then comes the quality and the OE and the maintenance. These are some of the important pillars of MES. So we do understand the interfaces that are required, uh, you know, and as required by the SAT and S95. Uh, and that are always there in our skeleton project skeleton so those we will be able to show you some of this today but uh, what we can see from this slide is we have this platform agnostic experience Madhukar? next slide please so uh, next slide speaks more about varied industry experience um s88 or if you say s95 the standard it is applied in varying degree uh, in various industries uh, Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a, so very vast standards and not necessarily all softwares and all industry complies with it in the fullest extent. But uh, uh, we try to see what is the best uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, needed from the process perspective rather than the simply the standard. So if a process demands that we need to go into the standard much deeper, then definitely we try to see that, uh, you know, uh, if you just for an example, like there are different states uh, you know, uh, if you look at the state model of ISA 88, it's quite varied. Not necessarily all the state models are needed for each and every process. So it depends on how much you want to exploit the standard and how much you want to code. So we have done the projects where it is totally 100% compliance to uh, to the you know uh, to the projects which needs only just a, a modular architecture where we need parameter processing and generic programming using the control modules or equipment module kind of structure. So you know uh, it's the experience that teaches us uh, how much we have to use this SAT. Uh, uh, no, uh, and that has, that is one of the pain areas in the industry. Also, we see. Uh, how much we need to go ahead and in the implementation of SAT and that becomes as a many times a non-starter because we are not designed the project considering all these elements at the start but for us because we are so much diversified like in pharma SAT has to be also tied up with the GAM practices and you know we need to correlate and see that it's compliant finally with the GAM standards because that is more critical to the pharma industry 
So, you know, we know how to uh, correlate in between all this and come out. So, we can bring best of all this world in terms of documentation or the standards itself. But we have this varied experience. Uh, but as far as HCT it goes, you know, uh, our major um, batch experience comes from mostly the dairies that we have done around the world using multiple systems and automation OEM equipment, uh, be it right from reception to dispatch, that's how we say in the dairies. So, we have implemented batch on particular units and uh, or even for the whole uh, you know uh, uh, you know entire uh, production line of a dairy right from the subject despite as i said so whether it be raw milk handling or the reception area or homogenization or uhds or pasteurizers uh, then the operator and dryer again it's a very complex process but how it, it becomes simpler using ACT, whether it's separators filtration units uh, in filtration it can be ro the universe osmosis, ultrafiltration, microfiltration, or nanofiltration, all kinds of techniques we know, uh, the, it's basically the membrane filtration that we have done. Uh, the CIP is multi line CIP is definitely utilities, filling, and packaging. Same way in FMCG, fast moving consumer goods uh, like shampoos and you know, uh, hand wash, uh, sanitizers, and uh, the toothpaste and the mouthwash, those uh, processes like matching blending, mixing, cooling, sterilization, and many more. Uh, same way breweries we have done right from brew house to you know filtration and packaging. So brew house, the fermentation unit, the filtration unit, all these critical units we have done. Vegetable oils, again, huge experience in acetate standards. Uh, Madi, can you move further? Again, uh, uh, in terms of uh, pharma, life science, huge varied experience right from tablets to capsule coatings, uh, right from dispensing, spraying, drying, cooling, loading, uh, packaging, uh, pilotization activities, or you know, be it in syrups, a vaccine, bulk drinks, bulk drugs. We are quite busy right now with that, especially in the fermentation, extraction, WFI, uh, you know, kind of an area. So, and again, bioreactors. That's evergreen industry for us. So, bio bioreactors definitely in the farm industry. Some of the case studies, uh, if you see, like the, you know, I just mentioned at the start of the presentation, so you can understand where we are coming from or what kind of projects we have done. Uh, typically, this is like a batch process solution for a leading brand in Cambodia, okay, for a US based OEM where we have done right from making the functional design as per the set standards to design, development, commissioning, and post commissioning 24 by 7 again with the cement system and the TI portal. Ready? Next. The next uh, slide is, uh, you know, speaks about a nutrition brand, you know, uh, basically it's a, uh, you know, infant mix you know, formula. mix. Uh, so, uh, nutrition brand in Europe for a process OEM. And again, if you see the, there are 10 plus product variants, and that's one of the enablers with SAT that, uh, you know, you have multiple product variants, it becomes very easy to manufacture and come the go to market is quite quick. And that is one of the enablers. And here we use the control logics platform and, you know, Rockwell platform, or Allen Bradley platform, factory soft and control logics. Uh, major sections of your operator dryer CIP were integrated over there. Again, a vegetable oil solution. Uh, which we mentioned in our expertise for a den in Denmark for, for a system integrator where we did the deodorizer plant and uh, five product variants of vegetable oil. So, in a recipe factor over there. Uh, so, right from designing end to end solution, uh, right from integrating, uh, doing the testing and then alarms, then reports and compliance, EBR, so electronic batch records, that's one of the key requirements which, which was matched. Uh, so if you see all these examples what we are given is not using the standard batch software of the shelf product but using plc and scada to you know uh, uh, finally design and uh, uh, you know these various projects so we use and there are many more examples like this which we can share with you uh, you know as required but uh, these are few of the snapshots what we have done so speaking about act standards for batch process uh, if we see uh, what's our understanding is uh, typically this uh, ACT standard, uh, you know, ACT uh, came into existence because there were a lot of challenges uh, in the batch control. There was no universal model to define what is batch control and how do you use it, how do you map it. And there were three. There are three areas we see like process model, physical model, and procedural control model. And then uh, the difficult for users to communicate between various entities and various uh, systems that were there. So it defined a standard terminology of what is batch and what is recipe. So how to make a product that is the recipe and what the equipment is controlling that is basically the equipment entity. So how you tie and then how you initiate or what control is needed that are the control elements in over there. Uh, the, 
the third problem what was field felt was there was integration of different vendors so you have a rockwell plc and a g batch prophecy batch and then you have an mes from cinematic it as an mes so uh, the communication was very difficult they, they, these are very proprietary domains over there so uh, establishing the common data structure the common language that definitely set the guidelines and batch control is difficult to configure basically so uh, how the configuration can be used easy because uh, in this industry you know the, the go to market the roi needs to be quite quicker the products are launched every few months so this language guidelines definitely help to uh, you know uh, come faster uh, in terms of configuration and uh, quickly and, and it enable a lot of things related to uh, doing more efficient programming and efficient configuration of the batch system in that particular industry so these are the four areas models terminology and the language and the guidelines so if you see the process model it basically maps the process so there are it's basically a, a complete process in that particular manufacturing environment or a production plant and it has got different process stages and the process stages are basically driving the process operations and then operations initiate the action so that's normally the hierarchy that is there in the process and then if we look at the Maddie, can you move next if you look at the physical model that is there in the plant basically it starts with an enterprise the worldwide enterprise and then there are individual sites and the areas but the first three enterprise site and area fall outside the domain of the SAT. but what basically is looked at the batch configuration is the process cell uh, that can be your reception area or that can be your storage area or that can be your packaging area and then there are individual units or there uh, in the process cell and from the unit you know you see something called as equipment okay and then the equipment module so uh, in terms of terminology okay so equipment module and then that drives the control module so basically a unit can be uh, 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 mixing you as a unit and then in mixing you have got various equipments like agitation heating so you know agitator becomes your equipment module heating becomes your equ equipment module and what basically it drives is the control modules finally which ultimately converts uh, communicates to your ios or the devices in the field uh, through the ios so basically uh, this is like a hierarchy if you move on uh, to the procedure control module it basically defines that what kind of operations you want to run uh, on that particular equipment and basically it has a, a, a standard you know, procedure control module is a process there is a procedure uh, and then the procedure has unit procedures and then it has a unit operation and then the phases so basically uh, this uh, defines what's are your, your your production sequence and then what it has to go through in terms of the control in terms of the operations that are driven by that individual procedures uh, if you look at this as a, a totality you know how we relate it for mapping it with the uh, plc scada based approach is Mary, can you go to the next slide so basically the procedure control module uh, you know uh, the procedures or the unit procedures for that matter and the unit operations uh, they basically drive uh, a unit uh, you can say and the, the unit uh, is further constitution uh, you know cons it is consisting of equipment module so whatever the phases are configured in the procedure control module you know they uh, you know via in terms of uh, parameters they will communicate with the required equipment module so phase will drive the equipment module and in turn the equipment module will you know, uh, drive the control module. So that is how is the relationship of the SCP procedures that are defined in the batch engine uh, that will communicate with the physical world or the physical model that is there. And ultimately once the action is taken, it will report back the parameters or reports will be sent back to the phase so that you know uh, we complete that loop of communication. So, in in the in theory this looks like you know how you map the process uh, procedure control model with the physical model now if we go to the next slide uh, what we see as key features you know mapping your uh, manufacturing floor or in a production floor using this terminology uh, what basically you get is the consistency in the batch design um, how you look so uh, a worldwide enterprise has uh, uh, multiple manufacturing units and you know they can design in a very consistent way the philosophy can be consistent in terms of how you look at your plant what are your equipment how your units are uh, what are the operations you can basically standardize all that 
it also established the communication philosophy between the various uh, modules that you 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 are using in the batch so you know you can decide what are the common operations you can decide the equipment sharing you can decide the resource allocation which is very much consistent uh, also uh, what is most important because these are mostly fda regulated industries uh, the 21 or 21 cfr part 11 compliance the electronic batch records and the electronic signatures this becomes integral so the reporting and you know the audit trail uh, is automatically taken care of because there is a very there is a big, uh, like a governance structure over there in terms of how various equipment communicate with each other and how the recipes are basically handshaking and it's a reliable framework you know because uh, it's modular it's defined it's very easy to maintain and uh, you know the even if there are any issues it, it, these are localized rather than having a global impact so it's a very reliable framework so these are some of the key features and the advantages that we get right is uh, is multiple uh, of course you know we are we can quickly configure and diagnose and you know we can quickly uh, you know uh, because it's a very structured approach uh, that it reduces time to market for any product so you can quickly change and bring in the product variants quickly change the recipes because now you are you know working in a very modular way and it, it is a very uh, a proper structure how you look at your plant and what you, how you look at your equipment and how you look at your assets. So asset management also becomes much easier. It maximizes the efficiency of the plant equipment usage because now you know exactly which of your equipment is available, which is you know which is on hold. The equipment sharing is a very important concept in SAT8, and that basically increases the the, the uptime of that equipment you know to be used in the production. It reduces the wastage and improves the product quality. And of course, the compliance. So these are some of the other benefits that we see largely of SAT. Uh, but over the years, when these vast softwares were used, you know, definitely we have seen so much of feedback that they, they are very high in initial investment. So you know, the license cost that runs, and so these vast systems are expensive and need additional investment in terms of hardware. There is a lot of recurring costs also that you need to maintain the license, you need to upgrade it, and then uh, you know the, uh, the the overall cost of ownership. Really, increases. these are very inflexible at times because once you have designed the plant using that particular product, then you become tied up with that product philosophy with that particular OEM, and then you need to, you know, in any new additions or expansions or anything in the plant, uh, you have to be again, you know, considering, uh, you know, everything at the start of how you have designed the batch system, you know, initially. So adding new uh, and you know new facilities or new expansions or new making modifications becomes harder. There is a very high total cost of ownership, as I said. Uh, you know, the license cost, the recurring cost is very high, and then limited cross-platform support. Really, we have seen that you know you can use uh, 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 automation layer from one PLC, and uh, you know the PLC from one automation OEM, and then the SCADA from another, and then the third one for the batch. So mostly, uh, there is uh, uh, the cross-platform support. You know. Uh, it has improved nowadays because of the OPC and other immature technologies, but still we see that it's not completely platform agnostic. Uh, and this has been one of the major challenges. So uh, I will leave it over here uh, to Madhukar uh, to take it forward that how we can configure, considering that this is, these are the limitations, how we can you know overcome some of this limitation and still maintain the advantages of an ACP standard using a PLC scanner. So Madhukar? All to you now. Yeah. Thank you, Navneet. Thank you. Good day, everyone. Good day. So, uh, so the next slide, uh, I'm going to speak about this um, the, the typical workflow using the batch uh, software. So, where we have the PLCs, SCADA, and the batch applications, and then uh, you can see the ERP and MES level. So, where we have the productions, uh, planning, scheduling, and product information, product management is there in the MES or the ERP software. And the batch software is uh, basically consists of recipe management, blast batch planning, process cell uh, resources, unit resources management, and uh, acquisition of uh, procedure element. That's all uh, there in the batch software that we uh, generally, uh, you know, we configure in the batch, and that uh, uh, the elements is used in the in the SCADA. So uh, SCADA is uh, uh, again like uh, is for the collection of the batch and unit information or the process cell information. It also gives the operator interface and uh, it's used for the alarm management or the event management uh, within the uh, SCADA application. 
and then PLC, uh, which is there for uh, we generally use for uh, control module operation and the execute uh, equipment phases, the unit operation and the trigger the basic alarm and event management uh, within a PLC. So this is a typical uh, workflow of using the batch software. Where the batch software is, uh, you know, uh, the skilled resources they configure the batches and uh, you know batch software and uh, the references you use in the SCADA and PLC applications. So uh, we are going to simplify these applications uh, by eliminating the batch software. So all the uh, all the features will come into the SCADA. So uh, we can see by the next slide where the MES and uh, ERP level remain as it is. Then we have the uh, SCADA uh, system. So the recipe management and the batch planning, uh, uh, you know, is it's in the, is configured in the SCADA application. Then manage process resources or unit resources is uh, uh, considered within the SCADA applications. And the uh, operator interface and alarm event management that remain as it is. In the PLC side, again, you can see there's a recipe management uh, that we have added. Uh, and this uh, acquire executive procedure element uh, which has been added uh, from uh, uh, you know uh, from, from the batch perspective and uh, this is like a typical uh, like uh, the, like the modify ultra tailored solutions that uh, we can we can use for the uh, plc and scada application using the uh, you know uh, without uh, batch app, batch uh, software so uh, i'm going to uh, just summarizing uh, what 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 are the uh, plc and the scada applications uh, uh, we'll have uh, is like uh, PLC. We'll have the uh, batch sequence execution, then unit supervision, phase equipment, and control module operations. Uh, these all will be in the, within a PLC uh, software. So we'll write the PLC coding for this. Then batch parameter management, process control, alarm and event generation, recipe management, batch operations. These comes into the SCADA, uh, SCADA system as I uh, explained earlier. Also, uh, data equations for the critical parameter, which has come from the PLC, and so. Uh, all this data will be acquired, acquired, acquired in, the, in the SCADA application. Now, uh, there again, uh, the SCADA depends on the, uh, you know, uh, the size of the PLC. We will have to use the SQL server for the advanced features uh, with the, uh, along with the SCADA application. So, if the recipe management uh, we uh, we need to uh, develop or we need to use, then we can use the either PLC or uh, uh, either we can use the SQL. Depends on the load of the uh, recipe management process. So uh, next, I, I I will explain about the core module or the features uh, for the design considerations that we have we have considered in our tailored solution. So uh, here again, uh, you can see the recipe management. Yeah, you know, batch execute executing the batch features in within PLC and SCADA. Uh, uh, so it's a recipe management. So here we can show like uh, we can we can use the create schedule execute recipe sequences variation. Uh, so these all will be done in within a uh, SCADA application. So new recipe will be created within a SCADA or uh, create, uh, you know, delete the existing recipe or copy uh, uh, parameters from the uh, existing recipes that will be uh, done within a SCADA. Uh, and we can use the uh, SQL server. We can use the front end, uh, you know, by creating the, uh, the VB.NET or .NET applications, and that can be paused in the SCADA to uh, give the operator more flexibility to use the uh, recipe uh, in uh, recipe data along with that. Now you know that uh, there are four types of uh, recipes like general recipe, site recipes, master recipe, and the control recipe. So uh, generally, uh, in the small application, they normally use the control recipe. If it is the control recipe and the application is small, then we can use the PLC. Uh, you know, we can create the array in the PLC and manage the recipes within the PLC. If it is a big recipe, we need a master recipe as well as, or maybe the site recipe. Then we may have to go for the SQL database uh, server where we can, uh, you know, uh, we we can add all the data over there and uh, we can manage that within a SCADA system. Batch planning and the scheduling uh, is done. Uh, we can do that in the within a SCADA system. So uh, some advanced scripting are required to be done in the SCADA and uh, some uh, front end for the dot, uh, .NET applications that we can we can use. Uh, one of the example that we have shown, like you can see the screen, there's some snapshot of the uh, one of our uh, demo project that we have shown, like uh, how to uh, you know arrange the sequences or the operation of sequences that we can do within a batch system yeah, um, by, without using the batch application, batch software. So that can be managed within the uh, SCADA system altogether. Uh, moving forward, the managed process cell resources. Uh, 
this like reservation and allocation of the equipments or equipment module or uh, you know that uh, can be done using the uh, uh, SCADA application. Uh, so we can develop the PLC code to acquire unacquired process sales, or uh, we can provide the options to operator for for uh, you know uh, for unacquired or acquired the system. So that can be done within the within the process cell. So allocating resources along with the obtaining the scheduling, uh, one of the like important aspects of the obtaining the scheduling information from the production planning. So that can be done using the uh, some SCADA scripting or uh, you know uh, some PLC PLC interface that can be done to get obtain the data from the MES or uh, other domain that is possible in this uh, you know ascended uh, configuration using the PLC and the SCADA application. Moving forward, uh, manage unit uh, is like uh, manage unit is like unit operate uh, you know manage the unit operations within a PLC and a, a SCADA application. So unit resource uh, manage unit resources by acquiring and realizing again uh, as you know that re, uh, units uh, cannot acquire or uh, cannot acquire another unit. So it has to send some request to uh, another request another uh, units to acquire or maybe for the some uh, service request. So that can be also done using the PLC coding. So we have to do some advanced coding using the scripting, and uh, we can we can we can use the these features within the PLC and SCADA application. Acquire and execute uh, procedure element. This uh, procedure elements again, as I said, like initiating or uh, execution of the phases. So phases uh, and the parameterization of the equipment module. So this can be done within the PLC. So as you see, uh, this uh, the snaps uh, which we have just ordered on the uh, one of our demo projects. So there we are, we are using the Rockwell PLC. The Rockwell PLC gives the flexibility uh, flexibility to add the uh, equipment uh, phases. Uh, so they have the features uh, available in that. But in other PLC, we can definitely use the some uh, you know uh, some coding uh, there, and then we can. Uh, we we can use the uh, these features uh, within a PLC and the SCADA application. So batch operations can be integrated within a PLC and the SCADA application by using the uh, some advanced scripting uh, done or maybe the standard feature which are available within a PLC code. Uh, batch auto start and the queuing. Uh, this is again uh, I can say scheduling uh, part of the scheduling. We can uh, trigger the batches uh, based on the uh, of automatic operations, uh, this operation or maybe giving the interface to the operator to uh, to the queue to the next batch, and uh, the batch will be enable auto start or maybe whenever the next unit is available. And uh, this can be done using the PLC and the SCADA scripting or the, uh, some part of the logic that we can add. Uh, some add-on uh, functions can be added in the uh, in the applications, the PLC applications, which can trigger the batch automatically or the queue in the scheduling part of the uh, batch operations that we can implement within the PLC and SCADA. Formula management, uh, this is one of the important part of the uh, recipe management system. So where we can uh, we can use the formula within the PLC and the SCADA application. So some uh, scripting or the SQL uh, database scripting that can be used for the um, formula management system. And then uh, this again will be validated based on the compatibility of the product and sequence operation. So that features can be implemented within the PLC and the SCADA architecture, and uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, that's uh, that's all. Like, uh, all we can integrate all these associated features within our PLC and the SCADA applications. One of the important uh, uh, feature or like uh, important part of the uh, batch application is the reporting. So uh, uh, we can create the customized reports um, uh, instead of using the batch reports. We can create the, our own reports, which like. Uh, uh, typically, the uh, the batch reports, which are like uh, production report or the production uh, development report, plant operators or audit trail. So these all reports can be done within the PLC SCADA uh, uh, by using the PLC SCADA application and the SQL SQL database. So uh, SSRS reports can be used here, and uh, we can uh, we can customize those reports as as per our requirement uh, considering the SSTS uh, standard. Um, you know requirement so that we can do uh, we can do and uh, whatever uh, the screenshot that we added uh, is part of our one of the demo projects that i'm going to show so uh, when uh, it is all the uh, 21 uh, 21 cfr part 11 compliance so that reports are there again the alarm and uh, train history uh, that is also captured here uh, we can log the data within the install uh, you know inside the sql database or uh, use the standard uh, scala features 
So these all are depends on the uh, uh, in the selection of the SCADA and the, uh, the PLC. So uh, SCADA, uh, the advanced SCADA, which where the, all the features are available, where we can uh, we can write the advanced level scripting. So that can selected for the uh, for the applications where wherever possible, so that we can implement all the features uh, that those are required for implementing implementing batch in the within a PLC in the SCADA application systems. Moving forward, the uh, electronics uh, signature and the audit trail, which I already uh, spoke about this. So yeah, it's a part of 21 uh, CFR uh, Part 11 uh, compliances. So we have to maintain those in within a, um, you know, in our system. So our trailer solutions that uses the SSRS, SSR reports, which are, uh, you know, enable with the SQL database and we can generate the reports uh, from there itself. Okay, so uh, demo, uh, I'm going to show the demo as well. So before that, I just uh, showing some of the snapshot of this, uh, like what is the physical architecture of this uh, process. Uh, we have the process cell, and uh, then we have the uh, control modules uh, there. Then uh, some of the, uh, these are the, uh, the scripting of the, done uh, in the VLC uh, for the batch sequence editor, editor and the resume management system. So where we can, uh, you know, write uh, STL sequence, STL, uh, structure text uh, language can be used and uh, we can save the memory of the PLC even in this case. So then allow handling is there some of the operations that have been kind of created in this PLC. So these all uh, based on the ACT uh, standards that uh, you know uh, we, are, we are using within the PLC and SCADA application and developing the batch applications. So uh, next to the demo or uh, next demo for the PLC and the SCADA applications so I can show you like uh, my uh, demo screen. So we have the process cell, uh, process cell here uh, where we have uh, two tanks, uh, two units, I can say, and uh, we have some uh, control modules, then uh, uh, some equipment models like temperature control and uh, uh, you know feed agitations and this kind of thing. So uh, I can show like uh, you can see my screen where we can show like uh, this is a standard template that we have for the uh, for the for the SCADA, SCADA uh, control modules, so where we can operate the operate can operate this uh, control module to manual operation. Yeah, you can put the manual operation, or you can see the more information, whatever uh, you know, interlock or maybe the pulsing or whatever the say, set point that you wanted to add or change for the alarm that can be done using this uh, pop-ups uh, the control module pop-ups. So. Uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, the control modules. So now next, uh, I'm going to move towards the uh, recipe builder. So I can show you. Uh, yeah, this is this demo is uh, basically generated or mix uh, like a mixing unit, but uh, considering all the industries, uh, so it is not uh, specific to food and beverage, but it's considered uh, food and beverage, pharmaceuticals or chemicals. So uh, the uh, attendees who are present right now, they can correlate with the, with their. Uh, system and uh, they can uh, easily understand this. So uh, we we have the receive, this is a recipe management or recipe builder uh, screen. Uh, here we can see select the recipe which we want to load or we want to modify. So that recipe we can we can configure it here. Uh, we can either copy the parameter from the existing recipe and we can uh, copy that to the another recipe or we can change the name of the recipe. Or uh, uh, we can edit this recipe uh, by some operations we can we can remove it or we can reconfigure it. So uh, if I want to clear this is sequence of operation that you can see. So I can clear and this uh, set of operations that I have for, for my recipe uh, which I wanted to build or the operation has to be built. So I can insert it here. Uh, so yeah, uh, next rise I can say one pass range which I added. I want uh, one of the uh, another operations to be as a, a solution one. And uh, yeah, and then the third operations that I want want as an air blow. Yeah. Uh, fourth applications I wanted to add it may be a uh, drain rinse or pump to drain. Yeah. So I, I have added this uh, four operations here, and if I go back to the, my uh, system again, uh, I can save this as a uh, some num name. Yeah, and then I can download this uh, the PLC. 
So these values now will be, uh, uh, you know, will be downloaded within the PLC. So uh, this application is developed is a basic application where we have used the PLC and the uh, SCADA applications. Uh, so recipes management is done in within a within a PLC as it is very small application uh, based on the SA configuration. Uh, I can see the recipe which I added right now are uh, this uh, four operations which are uh, you know the standard operations uh, has to be performed on this uh, system. This is a standard set of uh, uh, you know commands. And then we I added this uh, one pass range uh, solution one uh, pump to drain and pump to uh, uh, pump to drain solution. These operations being added. So I can I can see their uh, you know parameters associated with each uh, operation. So this we can get it from the uh, by clicking on this and uh, this alarm or maybe uh, you know whatever uh, parameters that are required for this operations that can be added it here. Then uh, I'll I just I, can, I I showed that I configured this recipe uh, and then uh, I loaded this recipe downloaded this recipe and uh, then I will go to execute this batch. Uh, then there is a batch procedure where I can see so number of uh, number of operation that I added within this units uh, are you can see now here like um, uh, in the sequential manner the one plus range or uh, solution one air blow and uh, pump to drain. Uh, if I wanted to add additional uh, operations, that they, they will come uh, down this uh, yeah, in the sequence uh, in this uh, on this page. Then I have the unit uh, procedure where I can start this uh, application by uh, clicking. Uh, you know, this is a standard pop-up that we have created for the one unit uh, where I can start this uh, unit. Uh, you know, and then it will ask me for the uh, batch ID. Now here, uh, one of the features that we can implement is the verification of the uh, batch ID or the recipe within uh, you know with the existing recipe or the master recipe that can be done using the SQL server database if we have all the recipes out there or maybe we can use the PLC also for the validations as well. So if I say like uh, if I give you some random num name to this recipe uh, batch ID so uh, I'm going to uh, FTR112 is, uh, is a batch name which has given to this and I have started this operations now yeah, unit is running and you can see the next phase, uh, uh, next operation of uh, one plus range has been started. So I can also see the even uh, the next, uh, I, I can show like these phases and uh, you know the permissive uh, uh, within that uh, batch operations. So uh, this application, like uh, we can uh, tailor uh, using, uh, uh, you know, our, our own requirements. So uh, this is possible. So when when I start uh, when I started this batch, uh, this uh, different phases out there. So batch has been started, and the preparation is when one of the phase, or maybe drain drain is another phase, purge is another phase. So I can hold this, abort this, or stop this, uh, or the advance the step index uh, based on the uh, you know, whatever logic that we write it down for to execute this operation. That can be done uh, through this uh, batch, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to do this application. Now we have the EM control modules uh, selection. So whatever the control modules required for for executing this uh, batch uh, for the particular operations, that can be I can uh, like uh, that can be operated by my, in the manual mode by the operator here. Of course, this uh, security will be configured uh, so that uh, you know the particular level or access levels uh, people can only access this. Uh, you know the pop-ups and facelifts. So uh, I can I can put this uh, EM in a manual mode, and I can uh, put it on hold or stop or abort and unacquire, and give it to uh, the other uh, EMs which are required, other units that are required this EM. So I can stop the uh, interrupt the uh, in as operator. I can I can stop the operation and uh, you know give the priority to other uh, other operations as well. So that is uh, possible, or the is a standard, uh, you know, terminology which has been trying to implement within the PLC and the SCADA application. So, um, so this batch which is running right now, so I can I can abort that batch from again from the unit procedure. You can see the individual phases or the operation. Those also can be uh, stopped or aborted from there. So I. After aborting this, uh, uh, I can release the unit for the next procedure. So as soon as the 
uh, units is released it may be the other uh, plant or uh, other schedule of this uh, unit uh, that will be executed uh, automatically so when i say reset the batch or you know i can release this uh, unit for the other production so the resources will be optimized or this uh, these operations i am doing right now is uh, is in a manual uh, mode uh, this can be done using the uh, you know auto auto mode so where we need to write it, uh, some logic within the plc code so where some uh, some uh, you know software code will be written so that uh, you know this uh, um, unit or the uh, uh, ems will be released or acquired uh, you know uh, automatically so that can be uh, done there then we have uh, trains um, configured in this uh, applications uh, yeah and uh, it's, it may be a historic trains or real time trains that we can configure batch parameters or whatever the batch we are running so that batch parameters can be uh, you know adjusted or maybe we can change this batch parameter and then we can uh, download this within a P in a plc yeah Okay, so uh, next moving to one of the uh, important part that's reporting. You know? So uh, here we have sh we have given the uh, one uh, in the sample reports uh, using the SSL report where the data has been uh, captured in SQL Server and that is going pulling from the uh, from the database. So we can see the batch records here. Uh, okay, audit trail also that we can we can create it some uh, plant operation or the uh, production reports that we uh, you know generally required for the uh, production perspective so that we can configure uh, within this application by using plc scada and wherever the sql is required so yeah that is uh, you know within this applications we can generate it so you can see this uh, the report informations where we can uh, check these uh, you know the previous batches also where we have uh, you know executed earlier so we can give the filter and we can select uh, you know, standard module that we can create and, uh, uh, you know, we can execute uh, the report, or, uh, which is the uh, 21 CFR part 11 compliance, which is required for the executing any batch software. So uh, we can do within this, uh, uh, you know, PLC SCADA application uh, system. Okay, so this all about our, our demo. So uh, just to summarize, uh, I can say like, our batch solutions using the PLC SCADA uh, without the uh, batch software for a batching requirement is based on the SATH standards uh, covering almost all the batch features. And this solution is like uh, alter, uh, we can alter it or we can uh, customize as per, as per your requirement. So um, the solution approach is also will help you to optimize your cost on the project. So we can, uh, you know, you can leverage our global experience uh, resources and services for tailor made applications to use meet your meet your uh, needs or expectations yeah so we'll move third uh, third part the question and answer so prajwal uh, yeah uh, thank you madhukar and namit that was a very informative and elaborate session that you discussed today uh, we were slightly over time for our questions but we do have time to take in three questions uh, today one of the questions that our participants wants to answer and uh, either Navneet or Madhukar, you can take this, is uh, in terms of efforts, how is the PLC and SCADA-based batch development comparable with the standard batch software? Uh, yeah, means uh, standard batch software, yes, it gives, it's a tool basically to configure your uh, plant environment into a batch uh, uh, model uh, it's a tool so basically it will um, uh, substantially reduce the effort but uh, if you see uh, the effort that is required to integrate the batch uh, especially in a platform agnostic environment it's quite high the other thing is the batch uh, software configuration requires high skills so uh, you know not any engineer or you know in any automation engineer or a, a person from the manufacturing background or plant environment will be able to uh, you know, handle the batch configuration. Uh, so it's a very high skill job, and normally uh, these skills are niche and uh, not widely available. Uh, so if you see, uh, if you configure it in the PLC SCADA, yes, at the start it might require more efforts to configure all the modules, uh, uh, and uh, it's it might it can be a one-time effort because you can standardize and templatize this, and you can break, uh, break, break, make the libraries and symbols. 
but then you know normally batch processes are quite repetitive or iterative so we can use it regularly so the net roi if you see in a long run plc scada the efforts that are required to configure design develop and you know uh, maintain is uh, lesser than using the standard batch software so yes if you look at the start maybe uh, uh, of course it's a very high cost solution the batch uh, in terms of the actual license cost and if you see the net multiplier effect like you know the skills cost and the hours cost it would end up higher than the, this new way of doing you know using plc and scan or the economical way of doing the plc and scan okay thank you nanit uh, interestingly you touched upon the aspect of skills so the next question from one of our participants is on the same lines uh, the participant wants to know does the engineer need any special training in terms of skills uh, to implement such a solution yeah means uh, of course like uh, we can understand the sat at standard as a theory uh, you know definitely by uh, you know going on the internet or the web but uh, using the software which is the off, off the shelf product standard batch software uh, you will need uh, definitely a, a classroom training uh, uh, you know to go through and then only you will be able to understand how to you know basically do the equipment configuration recipe configuration and you know everything while the standard plc scada you know yes you i won't say a basic programmer uh but once you are done few projects and, and then you know a bit of an advanced programming you will be able to do the plc scada configuration uh, you know uh, for the back end industry that's what i would say okay i i see some questions trickling down but i i just will take this last one and the other questions will get back to you individually uh with your responses the last one that i'm taking today is how do you manage the documentation and standardization if you are using a plc and scada based uh, batching solution yeah uh, this can be used yeah yeah you can add on it also and that uh, yeah so the documentation requirement uh, for the batch is uh, you know we can we we can you uh, uh, use the batch reports and uh, we can uh, you know provide a documentation of the production uh, you know compliance with the uh, regulatory uh, compliances like 21 cfr part 11 so as a sql server a sql reporting services that we can use for the uh, generating the documentation reports for the application yeah uh, from my side i will add that uh, in terms of the specifications um, yes uh, definitely you know, we have standard templates available for you know uh, making out the detailed detailed design specs that are needed for especially the equipment modules and the control modules so yes you need a fair amount of documentation because the documentation you will be able to put a proper structure and then the, the implementation in the automation code becomes very easy be it scripting in pl or you know plc logic uh, so yes functional specs uh, definitely uh, once we produce those uh, in the ac uh, format uh, then we can definitely make the design documentation uh, detailed design documentation but again they are quite repetitive in nature so you know once you standardize on one template then you can just adapt uh for the further processes but because this iict philosophy uh helps us to look at the plant in a very structured and modular way uh, actually the documentation becomes much easier compared to a non sa environment okay thank you nanit for that elaborate answer uh so Dear ladies and gentlemen, if you have further questions, you can either write to Navneet and Madhukar on the respective email IDs shown on the screen, or you can reach out to us. Uh, post this webinar, we will reach out to you, uh, seeking some information about uh, your feedback on this webinar and how would you like to engage with us. If there's a future topic that you would like us to cover in our uh, webinars we'll be happy to host that as well uh, for today's session that's all we could pack in in the 45 minutes allotted time for this webinar so thank you for your patience hearing and we'll get back to you thank you thank you very much Anna. have a nice thank day you thank you very much folks thank you bye-bye thank you, thank you everyone